Uh, is it? Works. Yeah, it works. So, hello everyone uh, on this uh, presentation about uh, guaranteed minimum bandwidth feature. We are three of us on the stage. Miguel. So I'm uh, I'm Miguel Avalle. I uh, I'm the I've been working with uh, Neutron for since uh, 2013, and over the past uh, three cycles, I've been the I've been I have I've, I have had the honor to be the the Neutron PTL, and uh, it's it's been a great honor these past uh, three cycles. And I am Ben Seromšić. I'm a software developer for Ericsson. And uh, in, the la in the past, in OpenStack, I worked uh, for a short time with uh, Heat and Horizon, and nowadays I'm mostly developing Neutron. Yeah, and I'm Balaj Gibizer, Gibi on IRC, and I'm a Nova Core developer working on this feature on the Nova side. So, what we talk about? Yeah, uh, Be before, have, before, yeah. before we continue, there's, a, there's another two per people that we want to mention here. The first one is Lajos. Please stand up. <laughs> he's, uh, he's been key, uh, uh, one of the key persons developing this functionality. And the other person that we want to, uh, to mention is uh, Slawik Kaplonski. Slawik is uh, one of the Neutron Core team members, and he's also been one of the key persons uh, developing this functionality. Slawik, we miss you. <laughs> OK, so what you will see today uh, we will try to give you an overview about this feature, why do you need this, how this works, and then we plan to show you a re real live demo. We have some technical issues with the, present the presentation, but uh, let's see if we can solve in the meantime. Uh, if not, then you will see a non-live demo. <laughs> uh, and then we go back to the slides to talk about where we are with the actual implementation of this feature, and then most probably you will have time for questions. Okay, let's dive in. Why do you need minimum guaranteed bandwidth? Uh, first of all, if you have network heavy applications, then the definition of network heavy tends to suggest that you need something like a guaranteed uh, pipe coming out of your server uh, or going into the, your server. A basic example of that is when you have a streaming application where each video stream has its own well-known bandwidth need, and each application server has a configured number of streams it can handle, then you easily calculate how much bandwidth your server at least needs to serve those streams. Um, another example is if you have uh, SRIOV devices in your, in your cloud, uh, then most probably you are giving uh, virtual functions to your servers, and and those virtual functions will compete of the bandwidth of the physical functions they are coming from. And if those virtual functions are used by different servers, then those servers will compete uh, on, the, on, those, on that bandwidth. And you most probably want to avoid fight over bandwidth, and instead you want to split that bandwidth properly uh, beforehand. So these are the use cases. And then we can go a bit more details about how this works. Uh, this feature works as a cooperation of three OpenStack components, uh, Neutron, Nova, and Placement. Uh, and we are assuming that you're a bit familiar with Nova and Neutron, because those are well-established OpenStack components. But Placement's are pretty new, so we would like to talk a, a more bit about uh, why we need Placement for this and what is Placement. Um, bandwidth is a resource that is naturally belongs to Neutron to handle. And in the OpenStack baseline, when you want to place a VM to a certain compute host, uh, Nova decides the place of the VM based on its resource needs. And in the past, this decision was, was impossible to make based on based on resources that are not owned by and managed by Nova. So one reason we introduced placement in OpenStack is to allow uh, placing VMs based on resource needs that are not managed by Nova. And as in this case, uh, the bandwidth is, is something that's managed by Neutron, we need placement for this feature. And what is placement? Placement is a database and the REST API uh, 
uh, and placement maintains a qualitative and a quantitative resource view of an OpenStack managed cluster. Uh, and we will dive a bit into that, two views of the cluster. Besides all, those, all these things, placement gives you a lot of benefits uh, during scheduling. It, it uh, solves uh, race conditions and, and makes sure that the resource allocation could be, could be done atomic, in an atomic way. So what's inside placement? Uh, so placement stores the qualitative and quantitative view of the resource, or resource view of the cluster. And the basic, resource, uh, ba basic source of resources is the compute host. So compute host is represented in placement as a resource provider, uh, as simple as with the name and the UID. And as we go forward, uh, as a compute host provide resources, Spencer, please. Uh, provide resources. Uh, you can have placement can store resource inventory for you. So this compute host might provide disk memory and uh, and and vCPU resources, and that and therefore in placement for for this compute host resource provider there will be inventory of these resource classes and the total amount of value for all, for each. Of course, placement will store extra information top of the total, total available resources for each resource class. But we don't dive into that right now. Uh, if you are interested, this morning was a good presentation from Kevin about these, and also in Vancouver from Eric and Ed. You can find that video online. This is the qualitative view of, of the system. So these are resources that can be consumed. But there is another view of the system where you describe the quantitative <laughs> Uh, uh, part. For example, if your compute host provider uh, tells placement that it provides uh, 10 gigabyte of, gigabyte of disk, uh, it might want also uh, describe that this disk is coming from solid state disk or a, or a spinning disk, because that affects your, your, your um, quality of service. This information can be, can be described and stored in placement as traits. Uh, like this, this is the, the, the disk is coming from a solid state uh, 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 hardware, can be described as a storage disk SSD trait. Um, this completes the picture. So you have quantitative view with resources, and you have qualitative view with traits. Um, uh, let's go forward. So uh, this is half of the picture. You, you, you can store resource inventories and traits in placement. Uh, but you also consume those resources. So when you go to OpenStack and, and boot some servers, Nova will eventually create consumers for your VMs in placement that are consuming resources from resource providers. Um, and this way, placement will have a view not just about the total available resources, but what is used and what is still free for uh, new allocations. These are the simple things. And if you go forward, then there are complications. Your hardware already complicated than that. Your compute host will have more than one physical network device. And if each device provides some bandwidth, some resources like bandwidth, then you want to express them as separate resource providers, because you cannot consume from both at the same time for the same virtual NIC. So those, will, those providers, uh, those physical NICs will be represented as two separate providers. Uh, but you still want to express that they are belong to the same compute host, because your server cannot consume from two compute hosts at the same time. So this, this creates a tree in placement of resource providers, where the compute host is a root resource provider. And there could be many layers of child providers under them, 100. This is all you have to know from placement so that now we can talk about how we model bandwidth in placement. Miguel, we'll talk about that. So, um, so uh, before, before implementing this feature, we were really faced in the, between Neutron and Nova with a dilemma. On one hand, in Neutron, we have had a minimum bandwidth uh, quality of service rules since many cycles ago. So we were so so with minimum bandwidth, you were able to say, okay, I want this port, 
and I want this port to consume, to be given at least this minimum bandwidth in this NIC. So, 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 we, so we go and we wire the, 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 the virtual interface and we wire the bridge or we wire the NIC in Neutron in such a way that we deliver in the data plane, we de deliver that minimum bandwidth to the to the NIC, to the to the to the virtual interface of the of the of the instance. But then, what happens if Nova comes and schedules such a, such a big number of of uh, uh, instances in that in that compute compute host and oversubscribes the capability of the of the of the NICs, of the physical NICs of the of the host? Then, I mean, we made a promise with the minimum bandwidth uh, uh, rule in the, in the, in the uh, quality of service policy that we cannot deliver on because, because NOVA doesn't have any knowledge of the promises we made to the, to the user through the, through the quality of service. So, so, so what, what we are doing is essentially having NOVA and Neutron cooperate using the placement, a, the, the placement API in such a way that we in Neutron, we let placement, we create uh, resource uh, trees of resource providers in placement in such a way that when Nova schedules a, an instance, it's going to take into consideration the promises that we made in minimum bandwidth to the ports of that instance. So as you can see here, we have, we have, the, we have the root of the, uh, so we have the root of the tree which is a resource provider, and that's, uh, and that's the uh, compute host. And then underneath that, we have a, a couple of, uh, of uh, agents that are also represented as nested resource provider of that, of that uh, compute host. And underneath that, we have uh, uh, virtual NICs or, or bridges that belong to, to, that, uh, to, the, to either one of those agents. And that's another uh, nested resource provider in, inside the, the, the structure. If we go to the next slide, please. We can see in a little more detail. So this is the second and third level of the, of the, of the, of the resource, resource provider uh, tree. You can see that we have the uh, nested resource provider for the agent. And underneath that, we have a specific NIC. In this case, it's, it's the, the NIC EN, ENS5 in the compute host. And what we are saying here is that this, this, uh, this uh, NIC has an inventory of that many uh, kilobits per second in, in egress and, th and that many kilobits per second in, in the ingress direction. And the other thing that we are saying there is that that, that NIC has those traits meaning that that that, that uh, NIC is connected to that physical to that FISNET, to that physical network in this case FISNET 0 and that we can connect to that uh, NIC we can connect uh, those uh, virtual NIC uh, types we can connect direct we can connect MACV tab and we can connect uh, uh, direct physical uh, for those of you uh, who uh, don't know what a BNIC type is, essentially when, when, you, uh, when you create a port and you want that port to be realized in a compute host, you specify the BNIC type for that port. In other words, you're telling, you are telling uh, uh, Neutron, when you, when you wire this port in a compute host, I want that, that port to be uh, uh, connected directly to a, to a physical uh, uh, network, in a physical interface, in, and that would correspond to the BNIC type uh, direct. So, so, so you as a user, when you create your, your, your uh, uh, port, you specify that at the, at the binding process. And the binding process is nothing more than the moment where Neutron, the, the, the binding process is the moment where Neutron realizes your port physically in, what, in whatever compute host that port is going to live. So, so, so now we have, we have, we, we, we want to create this tree of uh, nested resource providers for, for, for uh, Nova to use during the scheduling of the VMs. And what we do is that, that we communicate the, the, um, 
the inventories of bandwidth and the, and the, and the types of NICs that we have in the different compute uh, 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 host all the way from the compute host to the placement API. And essentially, this is a three-step process, as you can see here. We have, a, we have config files, and in, that, in those config files, we declare, uh, we declare the different bandwidths, uh, uh, physical bandwidths that we have available in different, different BNICs, in the, in the different physical uh, net, uh, network interfaces. The neutron agent uh, starts up, uh, it, reads, it reads its configuration file, and it communicates that, that uh, information to the, to the neutron server via the RPC channel, and it essentially it, 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 it says, I have, I have these many interfaces, I have these many, many bridges, and it, in each one of these bridges and in, this one of, in, in each one of these interfaces, I have this much uh, bandwidth inventory and I have this, these traits. And then the neutron server, what it's going to do is using the placement service API, the REST API, is going to uh, create the tree of uh, resource providers that I explained in the, in, the, in the previous two slides. Okay, so this completes the first step of, of actually using this feature, but as an end user, you, you most probably want to have your server getting guaranteed uh, uh, bandwidth, and for that you need to do some extra steps. So as a first step, as Miguel described, Neutron will periodically and continuously report resource inventories to placement. And when you as an end user want to have a server uh, with a port that has guaranteed bandwidth, you go to Neutron, create a port as usual, but you also select a QS policy rule for that port that might be pre-created, uh, the, uh, the administrator pre-created for you, or you might also be able to create yourself. It depends on the configuration of the, of the cloud. But that will describe uh, that how much bandwidth that port needs. And then Neutron will return, return back to you the UI of the port as usual. Now you go to Nova and ask a server from Nova and you specify that Nova, please plug this port as well uh, to my server. So Nova will know that he needs to, it's need to plug a port. Then uh, Nova needs to figure out what is the resource needs, overall resource needs of your server. And that's coming from different places. One place where you specify resource needs is the flavor, you debuted the VM with. Uh, there you specify CPU, memory, and disk. But now with this feature, a port will have a resource needs as well. Nova only sees the UID of the port, so Nova needs to go to Neutron and ask Neutron, what is the resource needs of this port? Neutron will, based on the port's QS policy, answer this question, uh, answer this question to, to, to Nova. Then, as Nova now gathered all the resource needs the server needs, Nova can go to placement and ask placement, please placement tell me where are those compute hosts, where are those resource providers representing a compute host uh, are in the system that are capable of support this overall resource needs of the server. Uh, then placement will go into the inventories it knows and search the database for, for allocation candidates basically resource provider trees that still have uh, available resources for your request. So, Nova will get back a list of allocation candidates from, from placement, and each allocation candidate is capable of supporting uh, this server. So, Nova will now use the basic, the, 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 the normal filter scheduling process to filter those down further based on uh, extra logic that Nova has, like NUMA and, 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 uh, and others, to select one single compute host, one single allocation candidate that will be used for your server. When it's done, Nova will go back to placement and tell placement, now placement, this allocation candidate becomes a consumer. Nova creates a consumer that consumes all the resources that the server needs uh, from those resource providers that are selected by placement first by providing allocation candidates and then the final decision made by Nova by filter scheduler to, to select a single resource provider tree. So now Nova knows which compute host the server will, will be booted on and actually Nova knows which resource providers providing the resource needs of the server 
But as this resource is not just coming from the flavor, but also coming from the port now, Nova needs to tell Neutron what was the decision. It's not new. Nova previously did port binding to tell Neutron which compute host the port will be bound to, to let Neutron do some extra preparation work on the networking side. But now with this feature, Nova needs to also tell Neutron which resource provider, which physical network device will provide the bandwidth uh, resource needs of each given port. So that will be an extension of the port binding. Here, we also need to mention, and I think Miguel would like to talk about the port binding a bit because that's, that's something we changed. So what I want to mention here, and what I would like you guys to remember is that in this process that we are showing here, steps three and step, step three and step seven were already happening anyway. I mean, that's, that's, a normal, that's part of the normal process of booting an, an instance. So Nova, when Nova is creating the instance, one of the things it does, it, it, it requests from, from, from the Neutron REST API the characteristics of the ports that, that are going to be connected to that, to that uh, instance. And it also, it, it also once, once the decision is made to, sca to schedule the, the instance in a certain host, that was the moment of binding the port. In other words, it's the moment of telling Neutron, Neutron, please, that this port is not, is not a, an entry in the database anymore. Go and, and create, wire this port, instantiate this port, realize this port in this compute host. So steps three and step seven were already happening anyway. The only thing that we did is that we added some extra, informa some extra information in the, in the in the dictionaries that are exchanged in, the, in, in, that, in those uh, two steps. Okay, so if the port binding succeeds, then Nova goes forward with the normal server boot processes as before. And that completes the, uh, completes the whole, whole process and you as an end user will get your server booted with the port with guaranteed minimum bandwidth. Okay, I think Miguel, we talk about two small, or? So remember, remember, remember step three. So in, in the step three, Always, we have always, when, 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 no, when Nova requests the port, the port information, we send back that dictionary through the REST API in a response to the, to, uh, through the REST API. The only thing that we are adding is that the port, the response in the port has a new attribute, which is resource request, and, and that, that resource request includes two other attributes. It's a dictionary with two other attributes. Number one, the resources, and what, there we are saying, okay, this port has, uh, has a minimum bandwidth, uh, a, a QR rule associated with it, so that's the, the, that's, the, that's, the prom, that's the bandwidth that we promised to that port. And the reason we did this that, this that way is that we didn't want Nova to have to learn to talk to the uh, quality of ser neutron quality of service API. We wanted Nova to mostly continue doing more or less the same thing it's been doing for years. So we just added this, this request. And the other thing that we added is, and by the way, we, since we are, we are, this, this port has to be connected to this physical network and with this BNIC type. And this is, a, this is this required uh, attribute, sub-attribute sub is what is going to be used against the traits of the resource providers that we created in the, in, in the placement uh, service. There's, now we are looking at what Nut, uh, Nova is sending to Neutron in the binding process in the, in the, in the step number seven in the, in the, in the graphic. Again, this, this uh, dictionary was already, it was anyway being sent by Nova. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a put request, it's an update request to the port from Nova to Neutron, saying, Neutron, please bind this port in this host. And that, that was happening anyways. The only thing that we are adding is in the binding profile, and binding profile, it's, a, it, it's an attribute that we already existed in, 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 in Neutron, that, it's pre, it, it, that was specifically created for to send this kind of additional information for the binding process. The, all we are saying is uh, we are uh, it, uh, adding the resource provider UUID. In other words, the UUID of the resource provider that represents the BNIC, 
that, that placement selected. And, and that way, Neutron has now all the information necessary to uh, bind the port in the host selected by Nova and in the interface that can provide the, 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 minim, the minimum bandwidth promised to the, to the port. And so this is the place where we would show you a demo. Yep. So basically what is going on is that we have a working live demo on another laptop, which we cannot connect to the projector. So I'm sorry for that, but I will not be able to show you that as it is. But we have uh, backup slides, which, oh, shall we give it a try? Yes. Okay. Open. Let me just... Until then, for the sake of simplicity, let me. So, so bear with us just a couple of minutes. We're going to give this a try. If not, we come back to the to the backup slides. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, you spoke about SRIOV uh, car network card. So let's say you have one physical port and you have uh, multiple uh, virtual functions on top of it. And uh, NOVA requests, uh, let's say, two uh, virtual functions. So when you make allocation uh, two out of, uh, let's say, 16, how much of uh, bandwidth are you going to reduce on the physical port? So you promise a minimum bandwidth. Now an allocation has happened and uh, two virtual functions have been consumed on the physical uh, function. So how do you partition? Do you like equally partition the total bandwidth across all the virtual functions or you have a mechanism to control it per virtual function? So I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure I understood the question, but let me, let me give it a try, okay? Um, so, so, so remember that, that in, 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 the, in the response we sent to, to, to Nova from Neutron, with the port characteristics, we say, we say this port requires this, this, much, um, this much bandwidth. And that, that, that is a consequence of as associating a, a, a minimum bandwidth rule, QS rule, to, to that port. With that information, what, what between Nova and placement, they go and they, they, they select the host and the, within that host the inventory that can fulfill Good work. Yeah, the, the, the bandwidth available in, that, in, the, in, in one of the NICs of one of the hosts. Once Nova and Placement take that, that decision, that, that, the, the bandwidth consumed by that port is deducted from, from the resource provider. So ne the next time, when you schedule another, another instance against that host, against that NIC, uh, the, the inventory, the bandwidth inventory of, um, of, of, that, that, uh, that, of that NIC is already updated. It reflects the fact that now you have the first port consuming bandwidth from, from, from that uh, NIC. Is that, was that the question? No, sometimes uh, uh, you, when you have virtual functions, how do you know how much of bandwidth to reduce once the allocation is done? You oh. actually, actually ask for that bandwidth. So when you create a port in Neutron, you tell Neutron how much this port will use. That is at the physical level, right? No, right. no, that's on the Neutron port logical level. You will tell Neutron that this Neutron logical port needs one gigabyte of minimum guaranteed bandwidth. And okay. then uh, this will be that used from the inventory of the physical function that actually create, that, that is uh, 
uh, uh, used to create the virtual function for your VM. So you're deducting from the physical function, so that's what you're saying? Yes, and that's, and that's, why, that's why this allows us to actually fulfill the promise. If you want this minimum bandwidth, we, we commit to deliver this minimum bandwidth to you, because now we, we, are, we are deducting whatever your port is going to consume from, from, from that inventory, we're deducting that bandwidth from that inventory, so we don't oversubscribe anymore. That's exactly the yeah, point okay. of this feature. Thank you. OK, so I think we can show the actual live demo. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the colors. Sorry for the color space. That's the best we could produce now, but this way it, it, it is at least live. Uh, so let me first jump into what the demo will show you. Uh, I want to show you uh, what you need to expect as the user of OpenStack from your environment, how you can discover that the version of OpenStack you're using is supporting this feature or not. So we will be talking about a few Neutron API extensions and placement API micro versions that you will need to use this feature. As we probably already mentioned at the beginning, this is a work in progress feature. Uh, so you can reproduce all what I'm showing if you take the master branches of Nova Neutron and placement and the few patches that are still under review. Uh, then I will show you what kind of configuration the cloud admin uh, will need to produce to set up uh, what kind of resources are available in the system. This will be mostly neutron configuration files. And then I will try to show you three scenarios uh, which will show the feature working and also what kind of guarantees it gives you and uh, when it cannot satisfy what, is ask what, what you're asking from the system. Uh, I may have some, uh, uh, maybe three colorful figures later. I will hope work with this <laughs> strange uh, color space, but let's see. Uh, and here now I don't need the slides anymore, but uh, don't care about this. These are just my uh, own, own uh, notes. Uh, this will be the one uh, where you should see what is happening, and I hope this is uh, readable at this point. So the first thing is that this demo is running in a desk tag. This is just the desk tag directory I am using. Uh, I already built desk tag. I don't want you to wait for that now. And uh, for the sake of simplicity, so I don't have to switch between an end user, an unprivileged user, and an admin user, I will be doing everything as an admin, but I will be mentioning what kind of operations are usually this and uh, usually that. Uh, so the two API extensions you will need from Neutron, and which will be hopefully merged in uh, the Stein release, are uh, the uh, QoS bandwidth minimum ingress extension, which makes sure that you can create a QoS policy rule which uh, describes the ingress direction of the minimum uh, guaranteed bandwidth. The ingress and egress in this case always uh, are meant from the perspective of the VM, so they are practically egresses upload and ing ingresses download. Then uh, the other Neutron extension you'll need is the port resource request extension. Uh, this refers back to what Miguel already explained. Uh, this is the machine-to-machine -machine interface between Neutron and Nova, where Neutron uh, tells Nova what kind of resources are needed for this port. Uh, so this is usually not seen by a, an, an, an unprivileged user. Then from placement, uh, what you need is at least 1.29 uh, uh, of the placement micro version. Here in this uh, system, we have 1.30, so this is more than enough. Then let me jump to the configuration that is usually preset up by your cloud admin. The first and simplest thing is that since Neutron Server is a client of the new placement service, you have to tell Neutron Server where the placement service is available and what kind of credentials uh, you have to access it. So that is what you uh, put into Neutron Conf. And uh, then here comes the real configuration which describes uh, your resources, so what kind of bandwidth you have on your physical network interface cards. 
since now we are working on support for the neutron OVS agent and the neutron SRI OV agent, I will show you both configurations. In the OVS agent, the kind of physical resources uh, that we are talking about are the bridges. So here the configuration describes that on the bridge belonging to FizzNet Zero, you have an upload of 10 gigabits and a download of also 10 gigabits. And just for the sake of an example, on this other bridge, you only specify uh, an egress uh, value and the ingress value is undefined here. Just, just a quick observation here. Uh, uh, in, the, in this uh, first implementation, we are, we are requiring the admins to specify the uh, physical bandwidth. Uh, we are thinking of in future iterations to have this, to have a auto discovery feature, yes. so you don't have to. But even when we will have the auto discovery, this will probably stay here, so the admin, if uh, he or she wants to, or can override what was auto discovered. Uh, and practically the same configuration exists uh, for the SRI OV agent. Here in this example, on this ENS5 uh, physical function, we did configure that a total available of 40 gigabits, I guess, is, is up and, and down. Uh, then let me move on to the actual uh, scenarios uh, proving that this feature works and, and how it works. So this will be the tricky thing. I, sorry, I hope the colors are somewhat, yeah, are somewhat working. So uh, the three pictures from left to right are the three scenarios I'm trying to show you. Uh, the different colors are for different VMs, so I will be booting altogether three VMs in three scenarios. The first scenario is a single VM. Uh, the fact that that VM will boot proves that you can boot a VM which has a minimum bandwidth guarantee and uh, boot is, booting is still working uh, with the new feature merge. Uh, then the second scenario uh, will add an extra VM on top, but in such a way that all resources should stay under what is the total available. So both uh, all the CPU, RAM, and bandwidth resources uh, should be sufficient to boot the second VM. And in the third, v uh, third scenario, I will be replacing the kind of orange uh, VM to the brown VM. And as you can see, the brown VM uses the same flavor as the orange VM. So, and the only change from scenario two to three is that we will be raising uh, the bandwidth request, the minimum guaranteed bandwidth request of uh, the brown VM uh, in such a way that it would try to go over the 100% of total available resources, and of course that's impossible. So what we expect is that the first boot will succeed, the second boot will succeed, but the third boot will fail, and Nova will tell us that it did not find a compute host to, uh, to do this job for us. So uh, let me just do this then. Uh, and before we jump into the scenarios, I have to show you a little bit of uh, environment setup. So these are the uh, resource providers. Uh, that uh, form the uh, resource provider tree uh, we already learned about. Uh, and then I can show you that on one of these resource providers, we actually have an inventory reported. Uh, does it work for you if I still reduce this, then it's still readable, okay. Uh, so what we can see here is that on the BR FizzNet Zero uh, resource provider, we have an inventory uh, both for egress and ingress uh, bandwidth, minimum guaranteed bandwidth, with the values of 10 gigabits up and down. Just to, just to be sure that we're on the same page, in these last two commands, uh, Benz is talking to the placement API. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which, by the way, is the same API that Neutron uses to the resource providers. Yep. Usually these values are only visible for an admin, so an end user will not see what is the total available uh, in, in the system in a so, uh, usual configuration. 
And uh, then I must show you that the network we will be using for all three VMs is a provider network. So it is a VLAN type uh, provider network using VLAN ID 100. And as in many other examples before, uh, we, sh we did show this is attached to FISNET zero. And uh, what I uh, still want to show you is that we have a QS policy, again, usually pre-created by the cloud admin. And in this QS policy, we will have, sorry, we have, we have two QS policies, one providing at least one gigabit of guaranteed bandwidth and another providing at least six gigabits of uh, uh, guaranteed bandwidth. So for some ports we will be using, be, be using the one and the other ports will be using the other and that's how we can uh, make the difference that I did uh, show you in the figures in the beginning. Uh, so let me show you that I already pre-created uh, three ports port one, two, and three for VM one, two, and three in the three scenarios. Uh, the first VM will be using six gigabits of uh, guaranteed bandwidth, the second will be using one, and the third again, six. So the first two together should be using a total of seven, that's under the 10 what we have available, but the first and the third together should be using 12, that's above the 10 we have, we have available. Uh, Okay, so finally I can really jump into uh, the demo and hopefully if I don't have a demo effect, I can show you the O at the beginning. Yep, thank you. If I don't have a demo effect, I should be able to show you that I am just booting a VM that requested six gigabits of uh, guaranteed bandwidth. Yep, and because the VM went to active, uh, uh, the request must have gone through, and let me prove that to you by asking for what kind of resource allocations are now present in the placement database. And what we see here, this is only a part of the actual resource allocation, so the resource allocation is made for the uh, whole VM, and, but this part only shows uh, that was made for the uh, port of the VM. Uh, so uh, we did not have just the VM booted, but the resource allocation actually happened. Now, uh, I can move on to the second scenario. As a reminder, the second scenario adds the orange VM on top, but still staying under the what's available. Uh, so I should be able to boot VM2, adding one gigabit of guaranteed bandwidth on top. And this again should succeed. It went to active, so it succeeded. And now what I wanted to show you is uh, that previously I did show you that some allocations were made, uh, proving that something happened in placement. This was the allocation of the six gigabits of the first VM. And now I can also go back to placement and ask for not just what kind of allocations were made, but altogether how much resource was used up so far. So I can show you that uh, seven gigabits is now used up from the 10 we have. And then we can jump ahead to uh, the third scenario in which, uh, uh, sorry, not there, in which we would be trying to go over the 100% mark. So we expect this to fail. Yep. And in order to do that, I'm first deleting VM2. I'm replacing that. So I'm also waiting for VM2 to go away so the resource allocations get freed. And uh, 
creating VM3 instead, which again uses the same flavor. So the CPU and RAM uh, requirements are the same, but now we were requesting six gigabits of uh, uh, band uh, bandwidth, so the boot failed, the system couldn't place uh, the VM as expected. Uh, let me just show you as a final part of the demo is that, yep, where is this the one? That the error message was actually no valid host was found, so this was really a failure coming back from the placement of the VM. And that concludes the demo, and if we still have time, let me just jump back to the slides. I think I think I only only use like three sentences to close this up. Yep. Uh, one thing is uh, what you saw is working progress. Uh, most of the things that are in this demo is or all the thing that is in this demo is available either as merged code or uh, get it review. Uh, you have the links there, uh, but there are things that are not working yet, uh, like you cannot move VMs around having minimum guaranteed bandwidth, or you. Uh, cannot use multi-segment uh, neutron networks uh, with this feature. We will be working on that uh, as, as we progress. Uh, and on the last slide, you will see uh, a lot of references uh, that uh, where you can read more about this feature specifications. And Ben's already published a blog post about the demo technicalities, so you can reproduce the demo in your own environment and look at the details. Okay, thank you. So I here. just I just want to say that as the Neutron PTL, it, it fills my heart of joy that it's Thursday at 6 p.m. and you guys are still here mm -hmm. uh, watching a uh, CLI presentation. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for your Thanks patience. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.